Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and welcome to the unusual system of V404 Signiae. In this video I'm going to talk about a recent discovery coming from the system and I'm also going to demonstrate some of the more unusual things happening right here in this particular area. Welcome to What The Math. So what exactly are we looking at here? First of all, we have a star that's actually very, very sun-like. As a matter of fact, uh, this particular star known as V404 Cygnii is um, an orange giant um, not so different from our own sun. Now, if you ever ask yourself a question, what would happen if you were to place a black hole in our solar system? This system right here would be able to answer it for you because that little spot right there that you see orbiting around the star is actually a relatively massive black hole. This black hole that's about 9 to maybe 11 masses of our own sun is basically responsible for some really unusual effects coming from this particular system. First of all, it actually caused this particular um, area to be designated as V, which is variable. In other words, its brightness changes. And the brightness changes because of this black hole right here. This black hole actually causes a lot more than just changing brightness. It actually causes nova. Basically these large explosions that occur when the material from the star deposits around this black hole and once in a while reaches critical mass and then explodes. But because the distance to our planet Earth is about 7,800 light years, it's not really a big deal. It's actually kind of difficult for us to even see these explosions. But it just so happens that we've seen quite a lot of them already. As a matter of fact, the most recent one was in 2015. And this particular explosion, this nova, was really, really well studied. As a matter of fact, many scientists focused on that explosion. And um, if you were to look up a little bit more about this system, you would actually discover this beautiful picture right here that represents the uh, light echoes in X-ray that um, were created by this really, really powerful Nova eruption. What's interesting is that um, this particular eruption created the most powerful X-ray object in the galaxy that was visible by pretty much every X-ray telescope. Um, and it was so bright that, um, well, essentially, scientists kind of panicked at first. And once they realize what's happening, they all start to take notes and try to study what's actually going to happen here. Now, because these objects orbit at a relatively close distance to each other, uh, the single orbit here takes about six and a half days, you can kind of see that um, the star is not really spherical. It's sort of egg-shaped. And that's because the black hole is causing it to acquire this shape and is basically also stealing a lot of material from it. Now, um, that's still not the most strange thing about this particular system. Because actually, scientifically speaking, uh, the reason why I made a video about this particular system is that it actually has now changed our understanding of black holes and how black holes actually form things like, for example, a Christian disk and also their beautiful relativistic jets that um, are propelled across many, many, many light years. Now, for the longest time, we believed that black holes are actually quite magnetic. As a matter of fact, um, the theory behind these jets is that black holes are so magnetic that they force the material uh, in the accretion disk to be propelled by the electromagnetic forces into these two regions, um, the northern region and the southern region that then generate the jets. So, similarly to how we believe neutron stars are super magnetic, we thought black holes are as well. But the more recent study of this particular system and this black hole from, I think it was October 2018, established uh, that this is not true. We've discovered that the actual magnetic field of this black hole, the so-called um, coronal magnetic field, is only about 461 Gauss. Now, this might not mean anything to you, so I'm going to give you a comparison uh, of something you may be familiar with our beautiful planet Earth with its magnetic field. As you probably know, Earth has a relatively strong magnetic field, but not as strong as some other planets. And the actual strength of the magnetic field, if you were to take a look at it, 
is currently defined as 0.3, but it's actually maybe closer to about 0.5 to maybe one Gauss. So it actually does change depending on the location. Um, in comparison, the black hole that I just showed you had a magnetic field of about 461, which is, I guess, about a thousand times higher. Now, interestingly, our sun uh, also has a magnetic field and it's also about one Gauss on average, except for inside the magnetic spots. Inside um, an actual sunspot, magnetic field can reach up to about 3000 Gauss, which is about 10 times higher than that of a black hole. And what's more, a typical MRI machine can produce up to or even more than 10,000 Gauss. And that's um, quite a lot more than the black hole I just mentioned. Now, this doesn't mean that uh, we produce more magnetic field here on Earth, because a typical neutron star or a pulsar, as you see here, um, can actually produce much more. As a matter of fact, trillion Gauss is not even a problem for a neutron star or a pulsar. But a black hole that we've discovered a long time ago, this black hole right here seems to not really produce that much at all in comparison, only 460-ish. Now, this actually puts a huge dent on our uh, theory because we cannot then explain how it, this black hole can produce uh, these very, very strong emissions. To generate these beautiful and very, very powerful rays, you actually, in theory, need a lot more magnetic field. And so how these black holes are capable of producing this has now become a mystery because having calculated the magnetic field as it is right now, in other words, it's actually about 400 times lower than we originally thought it was, means that we have now just created a new mystery. We don't really know how black holes generate those beautiful, extremely powerful relativistic jets. Now, there are a lot more interesting things that were discovered in the system, including um, what seemed to be unusual type of plasma consisting of electrons and uh, positrons, both at the same time. So we basically even saw um, antimatter in this particular region of the accretion disk. But I guess the biggest mystery is how is it actually generating all of this? If it's not the magnetic field, what is driving this unusually strong accretion disk and the jets that are being generated? And so until we can actually figure this out, uh, it's going to be a new scientific mystery and we'll probably be waiting for a new mission from the system that might actually happen in the next decade or so because it's been happening pretty much regularly for the past 60 or 70 years. Anyway, on this note, let's enter this black hole and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye bye. And if you still haven't subscribed, consider subscribing to the channel and maybe even support this channel on Patreon because it does help me a lot. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. See you guys later. Bye bye.